Hey everyone, Wolflobro here. Today, we discuss the future of Supreme Grand Master Asriel. General spoiler warning to begin, as today we will be referencing events from across the Warhammer 40k universe. But with that said, let's waste no time and just jump straight in. So as I sit here rather impatiently, still waiting for my Deathwing assault box to arrive in the post, I thought it would only be appropriate to have a little Dark Angels discussion. And one of the various themes I've been contemplating when it comes to the Angels is the future of its Supreme Grand Master. With his Primarch Lion L. Johnson returned, Asriel's life and role is changed monumentally. And while of course it is only a good thing, it's undoubtedly going to have an effect on the legendary Dark Angel in some way. The man who has bore the burden of the Unforgiven on his shoulders, now faced with his Primarch. Let's take the equally legendary Marnius Kalgar for example. A man who has etched his name into legend, who has been the master of the Ultramarines chapter, and responsible for their storied legacy. And that's not even to mention the star-spanning empire of Ultramar too. He is the only other chapter master in the Imperium to have gone through an experience similar to Asriel now. And while on the face of it, it is nothing but a rejoiceful moment, a reason to renew hope, it's clear the mere presence of Gilliman returned has had a profound effect on Marnius Kalgar. The chapter master still leads as the hero of legend he is, but within the Dark Imperium trilogy, we were able to see just how profoundly Kalgar takes any perceived criticism from his Primarch. Within the novel Dark Imperium, when Gilliman is addressing his assembled sons, stating how the first stage of the Indomitus Crusade is over, and now he has returned to aid them in repelling the Death Guard from Ultramar. He states when he leaves, Ultramar will be in a better state and better defended than it has been for centuries. And it explicitly tells us that Kalgar feels it as a criticism of him. And after that we get the really telling line, Failure was a new sensation to him, but he was becoming intimate with it. Under the gaze of the Primarch he realised that his failures stretched far back in time. The realisation robbed the glory from all his successes. All the glory. That's basically saying Kalgar feels like nothing but a failure in the face of his Primarch that he's done nothing but fail as a chapter master. And you can understand in a way why Kalgar feels like that. Any Astartes comparing themselves to a Primarch, their Primarch, of course they would pale in comparison. But for Kalgar, it feels even more than that. Realising failures stretch far back in time, and that it takes away all the glory success you've ever achieved. That is a huge psychological blow. Let alone for a chapter master who is renowned as a hero across the Imperium. And Gilliman's clearly aware to some degree, even remarking to Kalgar to not judge himself by his standards. That he's a Primarch. Yet again, Kalgar takes as another rebuke. And then in the third instalment of the trilogy, Godblight, we see the same, as Chief Librarian Tigurius speaks with Kalgar, clearly having noticed the change in his friend and commander, attempting to reinforce that the Primarch is not criticising him. Yet again, it's reaffirmed the internal doubts that Kalgar has, how he can't help but compare himself and we even get the line, he hated that title, too close to that of his gene father, as if he aped him, desperate for acceptance. 
As much as he thanked the Emperor daily for Gilliman's return, sometimes he felt suffocated by his presence in the world. Wow, now that is an incredible thing to see a chapter master feeling. I don't think it's too much to state the importance of that line of thinking. As much as he thanked the Emperor daily for Gilliman's return, sometimes he felt suffocated by his presence in the world. And if Kalgar feels this way, with an empire, with his Primarch off away saving the Imperium, well, what could we expect for Supreme Grandmaster Asriel? who has only the Dark Angels, the Unforgiven, and you'd expect a far closer proximity to his Primarch. Well, Asriel has his similarities to Kalgar, and also his differences. As a son of the Lion, Asriel takes the reserved nature to a whole other level. However, they equally have achieved a tally of victories to be envied. Asriel's recent years, in fact, have been eventful, to say the least. He was manipulated by the Fate Weaver to assault the Space Wolves and Fenris system. He has repelled multiple demon invasions of the Rock, one leading to the escape of the Arch Traitor Luther. And, oh yes, it's quite possible he was responsible for the warp storm that caused the Fallen to be dispersed across space and time. And that's just a few. So, it's safe to say Asriel has a lot more on his mind than Kalgar. And if Kalgar's mistakes have felt exposed by the presence of his Primarch Gilliman, well, I don't see how it'll be any different for Asriel with Lion L. Johnson. In fact, I think it could be worse especially when it comes to Luther's escape. For 10,000 years, the Supreme Grand Masters before him had held the Arch Traitor prisoner, and it was under Asriel's leadership that he escaped. We've already seen the conviction and anger Asriel held in seeking to pursue Luther, thanks to the short story within the previous edition's codex. It was what led him to lead the Unforgiven assault on the Somnium Stars in the Arcs of Omen campaign, which led to Lionel Johnson's return. So, not only did Asriel allow Luther to escape just before his Primarch returned, but he also then led his chapter and successors into a battle. They were well on the path to losing and it was only L. Johnson and the arrival of the Blood Angels that saved him. So any way you look at it, there's certainly going to be a lot for Asriel to reflect on. Now, obviously Asriel and Kalgar are not the same. As much as I loved and idolised Marnius Kalgar growing up, Asriel, you just feel, has an unshakable resolve that there's just something about him that would never give in to despair or pity. Maybe it's just that Dark Angel aura. Maybe it's the way Asriel carries himself, the brutalness of the decisions we've seen him take. Go find our discussion on the Caliban Protocol, for example. After prosecuting a campaign beside the Astra Militarum, honouring his allies for their performance, at the sight of a fallen, Asriel immediately shot the loyal Militarum commander without hesitation and enacted the Caliban Protocol, the merciless slaughter of all their allies who had just fought so loyally beside them. It takes a special kind of resolve to do that without blinking. If anyone could stand tall, not harbour any doubt in the face of his Primarch, well then surely it would be Asriel. And, well, we actually received a hint to the answer when Asriel first laid eyes on his Primarch within the Lion chapter of the Arcs of Omen campaign. 
As the embattled Dark Angels and Blood Angels were being demolished by Angron, the lion emerged from the shadows. In the next instant, Asriel's bewilderment gave way to awe. A tall figure in a flowing cloak stepped from the mists to place himself between Angron and Dante. Space Marines in black armor manifested around him and spread out down the steps. But Asriel barely noticed them. He could only stare at the warrior with the glowing blade and glinting shield. It did not matter that Asriel had only seen him before in tapestries, frescoes and stained glass. His very blood knew this warrior's identity. His gene seed sang with the truth. Teetering as close to being overwhelmed as it was possible for a space marine to come, Asriel went to one knee. He was looking at the lion, returned to his gene sons at the hour of their greatest need. Some part of Asriel squirmed with dread, for the Primarch had also returned in time to witness the sins of the unforgiven Ritz Large. His mind whirled with self recriminatory images, the rock defiled by invasion, Luther's escape, the horrors unleashed by the Tocolcha engine. Yet even these memories could not undermine the surge of raw vitality and exaltation that galvanized Asriel at the sight of the lion, alive and returned. And the key part there for me, some part of Asriel squirmed with dread, for the Primarch had also returned in time to witness the sins of the unforgiven writ large. His mind whirled with self recriminatory images. The rock defiled by invasion. Luther's escape. The horrors unleashed by the Tocolcha engine. Immediately, as we have seen with Marnius Kalgar, Asriel's mind leaps to his failures. And unfortunately for Asriel, there certainly seems to have been many over the recent times. Now, Asriel will be fueled with the fires of redemption. No doubt. A new beginning for the Unforgiven with the Lion returned. But what I'm really interested to see is how this all plays out in the novels as we move ahead. If we'll see the same reflections in the mind of Asriel as we have with Kalgar. If those perceived failures will continue to play on in his mind. If he'll feel criticism from his Primarch, when there's none to be given. And if the lion like Gilliman will notice, what the lion may see within his Supreme Grandmaster, and what he will do about it. Mentor Asriel, more than Gilliman has had the luxury to do. Or if that proximity would make those doubts worse for Asriel. The Primarch's greatness constantly reinforced right in front of him. It's an interesting little piece of comparison, not only in the similar reaction by Asriel and Kalgar, whether rightly or wrongly, but how their views compare to the legionaries of the Great Crusade. The current era chapter masters fear only doubt. Failure of an inability to live up to a legend. Yet the legionaries, they knew only the reality, a time when the galaxy was filled with the Primarchs, when there was no doubt to be had, because it was the Primarchs who had led, not themselves. So that is most likely the root cause of that feeling of failure, of chapter masters confronted with a legacy they in truth could never have hoped to match. Because as Gilliman told Kalgar, it's simply impossible for them to compare. They have done only what they could. More so even. So, how will this unravel for Asriel? Time will tell. But it certainly seems, or at least has teased, he shares a similar inner sense of failure of doubt, as Marnius Kalgar did. And it'll be that difference in personality that will show if Asriel lingers in those laments, or if he rises 
to the challenge of the lion. As always everyone, what do you think? Why do you feel both chapter masters share a sense of failure immediately at the sight of their Primarch? Do you feel this could linger within Asriel, as it has done for Marnius Kalgar? Could it in fact be worse for Asriel, with all the sins the Unforgiven have committed beneath his command? Or will it be the very real failures that will haunt him the most, such as the escape of Lufa? Or does Asriel possess such a stoicism, a resolve, that he will be able to push those thoughts from his mind? and focus it all into a redemption. And how do you feel we will see the relationship between Primarch and Supreme Grandmaster develop within the novels as we move ahead? As always everyone, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.